Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you six simple tips and tricks to help you design a 3D printable enclosure for your TFT touchscreen. So this is going to be really useful for anyone looking to do an upgrade from an older style click wheel screen up to a touchscreen or people designing a printer entirely from scratch. So the first one, or I should say zeroth one, because I'm not going to count it as part of the six because I promised I wouldn't repeat anything. But this is really useful, so I do want to mention it. Reference geometry. Modeling geometry that already exists. In this case, it's going to be the TFT touchscreen and maybe part of the frame where you're going to be mounting it. Having this geometry into CAD is really, really important for designing around, to know where the features are, where your key elements are, where wires are going, where you need to have touch access, SD card access, it gives you all the geometry and things to design to, so you can print it right sort of first time. It may still take a couple of attempts, but it's much better than doing maybe 10 iterations, trying to find the exact right position for things. If you want to know more about reference geometry, go check out my video on the Hamira upgrade. That's basically a really detailed method on how you can go through a design process that includes reference geometry. Now let's get stuck into the actual first one of the six, which is using existing features and fixings. So this is going to be particularly important for people doing an upgrade, where you're maybe upgrading your Ender 3 screen, let's say, to a touch screen. The Ender 3 screen fixes with two M5 fixings into threaded parts in the extrusion. So you've already got there two fixings and a mounting point, which you can use. I would suggest using that mounting point to mount the screen. This might sound really obvious, you're just replacing what's already there. But in scenarios where it's not so obvious, it's worth pointing out that use stuff that already exists. So for example, if you have extrusion, but there's not necessarily a mounting point, then make sure you're still using the extrusion and maybe a T-slot nut, the simplest method possible to mount what you need. One reason for doing this is that it will generally reduce the cost of the upgrade for yourself. But if you're going to publish this file on Thingiverse or Prusa printers, or just share the file anywhere, it's really useful to others that may not have the same hardware access that you have to be able to do that upgrade as well. You know, we all want to share the upgrades and mods that we're doing, so try to make it as easy for everyone else as you can. Number two is avoid contact with the screen. I don't mean with your fingers. Obviously, a touch screen is meant to be touched. I mean, with the 3D printed part. As you're designing a maybe little letterbox hole in the front for your screen to poke through, try not to make sure that those letterbox edges are overlapping the screen. One reason is you don't want to kind of impede the screen area where you may need to touch, but also if it's physically contacting it, it can cause false readings on the touch screen, which will make it unusable. So try to keep it as clear as you can so that it still works. That's one of the primary objectives, you know, making sure it actually works. Number three is try not to overcomplicate the design. There can be a lot going on, and if you try to aim too high and integrate too many features, you can overcomplicate things, and then you print it out, and it doesn't even work at all. Maybe the holes are not in the, quite the right place because you were rushing it or you wanted to focus on other features. I would suggest trying to get the basics right. The mounting holes for both the screen and mounting to the printer, having get the right size so you can put the whole TFT maybe into whatever enclosure thing you're making, you know, those very basic principles, they sound really simple, but in reality, it's actually not that simple to get right and perfect and printed to the right size. So get the simple things right, and then the complex things you can add later on, once you've got the basics and you know that it works. You know, having something that works, as I mentioned just now, is the primary objective. Number four is a great tip for mounting using machine screws. Now, I stock pretty much everything here with machine screws because it's what I use pretty much all the time. But in some cases, like when mounting a TFT screen with M3 screws, I don't really want to use a nut because it will be on the most visible face and it looks a little bit naff. So what I like to do is use a 2.9 millimeter hole into the plastic. And then when I use an M3 screw, it will actually tap into that plastic. It will be fairly tight, not too easy to remove. Also not that easy to insert, but it makes a really good solid connection. And for a TFT screen, I mean, it doesn't need to take that much force. So a self-tapping, or not designed to be self-tapping, but self-tapping M3 screw will do the job just fine. I think it works pretty well. Number five is to give yourself some slack. Try not to have the features fit really tight around the existing features. For example, 
where you're going to have a hole in the side for an SD card slot. Don't make it the exact size or really like 0.1 millimeters larger than the SD card. There's really no need. Give yourself like one or two millimeters. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of a gap there. You're probably here designing a do-it-yourself solution. This is for you at home. As long as it works, then it's fine. What you can typically find if you try to design your tolerances too tight is it just won't fit. So I find the best solution is to give yourself some slack. Put some additional tolerance in there, make everything a little bit bigger than it was maybe needed to be to make sure that if it doesn't fit quite how you planned or quite how you measured, then it should still work. And that, as we mentioned, is the primary objective. I should mention, don't do this for whole positions or anything like that. The positions need to be the positions that are specified. If you make them too wide or too far apart, obviously that won't work. But the actual hole itself, if it's a clearance hole, make it a bit bigger. So you've got some leeway to move that PCB, maybe half a millimeter around. All those little kind of movements do help when doing your assembly, just to make sure everything fits as intended. Remember, even the product you're buying, the PCB and design itself, won't necessarily be exactly to the dimension specified. It could be out by half a millimeter or one millimeter. And if you don't account for that in your design, it may not fit. So just be careful, make everything a little bit looser than you might initially have planned. And finally, number six, plan to have it printed face down. While this is sort of an aesthetic point, really, it's nice to have your LCD screen looking tidy. It's the part that you're probably most gonna be looking at other than the actual print bed and sector itself. So it's nice to have something that looks decent when you're using it. By printing it face down, you will tend to get the best print quality on that bottom face, which will then face you. And it also generally is the largest available face as well. So it should give you the best results for the print process itself. If you have a glass or textured bed, both of these surfaces have exceptionally either smooth or rough surfaces and can look really, really good when finished well. So that would be my tip. Make sure the face prints downwards to get the best possible finish. Now that the design's finished, let's do a quick print and assembly. The assembly of the screen to the enclosure takes four M3 screws. It prints face down to get this really nice textured finish on the front face and then fixes to the frame with two M5 screws and 40 series hammer nuts. Hopefully that video has been really useful to you. If you're looking to design TFT enclosures or other enclosures for screens for your 3D printer, hopefully these tips are really useful. And hopefully you've also seen how simple it can be. You don't really need to overcomplicate this with loads of holes and extra things and loads of features and make it really fancy. Something really simple can really be still very useful. Next up in this series, we're gonna be designing an enclosure for the power supply. So something that slots in, holds the wiring and the mains connection just safely and securely. So we can then add that to the printer and get all the power that we need. But for now, that's gonna be it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.